Okay, let's now move on and prove that this goes beyond just the basics, but it's also a really great tool for advanced users. I'm going to turn off the smart radius and bring my radius down a bit just like this. So that of course I can show my radius and it looks just like that. I now want to go into manual overdrive mode and I want to take control of this project. And to do that I go right over here and I select this tool right here. It's the refine radius tool. With that selected I can move into my work area and I'm going to increase the size of it here in the options bar I can increase the size or of course I can use any of the keyboard shortcuts. In this case I'm going to use the closed bracket to bring up the size just like that. Check it out. I'm now going to define the edge of transition. I'm clicking here along the edge. Notice that I don't go in too far into the hair. I want to work along the edge and the edge of transition. In other words, the areas I did not select in my initial selection with the Quick Select tool. I'm going to go all the way out here and get all the defined areas of these small hairs all the way up over here, just like this. And I let go. It redefines that area as areas of transition. Keep in mind that you can also subtract from this defined area that you've just created with this brush simply by holding down the Option or Alt key, you can then erase back into the areas you've just selected. You can also select this tool here from the Options bar to do the same, but I prefer to toggle back and forth between the two brushes with the Option and Alt key. Now you know. Let's take a look at the Show Radius. Look at that. I have the Thin selection combined with this Thick selection for the radius. Remember that's not the mask, that's the areas of transition. Let's take a look at the mask with the K key on my keyboard. Look at that mask. That is a professional mask created simply and easily by adjusting a little bit of radius and then painting in the edges. Wow! This is really, really nice. Any professional can quickly define that as a great mask. Not only that, if we zoom in on this just a little bit closer, you can also go in and refine this mask. Let's go back to my preview with the letter L on my keyboard to display the layers. And let's now shift the edge out here with the Shift Edge tool. Look at that. I can shift it out or trap it back in and find just the right position here to get what I'm looking for. I can go through and adjust my smoothness, feathering, and contrast, but in this particular case, I'm not going to touch those because I'm getting really, really great results here with just the shift edge. I could go back in and add a little bit more radius if I was having trouble along these harder edges and they weren't quite soft enough, but this looks really, really great. Now that's phase two. You've moved from beginner to intermediate professional, now we want to become a true professional. We go down here to output, right down here. I'm going to click on decontaminate colors. This is new, it's incredible. It's now going to go through and look at the edge colors along my image and it's going to spread that color out underneath the mask. Let's see what happens just by showing it to you here. Decontaminate colors, I click that. It's moving the colors out and into the hair, the surrounding hair. Let's bring up the amount. I'm moving this over to the right and let's watch what happens. Wow! Before and then after. I move this up. I'm pushing the color of the hair out into the detail along the edge. That is incredible. You used to have to do that with brushes and textures and work really hard on the mask, but you can now do that with a simple slider. Next, down here, the output options down here. Notice that I now have the ability to quickly and easily create a new layer with a mask without ruining my original image. And in this case, specifically, when I select decontaminate colors, it has to automatically create a new layer with a mask. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to select that and click OK. 
because I like what I see here. And then I'm going to close this down and let's take a look at the two layers that appear here in my Layers tab panel. We have the original layer that we started with. So we could start the whole process over again and recalculate the transition along the hair. But we have this second layer right here that was generated in this process and it has that decontamination and it has the finished mask applied to it. I'm going to turn off the mask here by selecting the mask, holding my shift key and clicking on it because I want to demonstrate how this decontamination works. Notice that it's pushing the colors out into the surrounding region around the hair. It's grabbing the color of that hair and spreading it out so that when the mask comes down on it, holding on the shift key and clicking on the mask again, it then traps in on that new color. Instead of the gray background, it's trapping in on this new color. Okay, there you have it. The basics to the advanced new features found here inside of Photoshop CS5 for making a really quality mask. Take a look at some of my other presentations on masking in Photoshop CS5 to learn some super advanced tips and techniques. Give it a try.